So hello and welcome to the Computer Lab. My name is Grant and I'm going to be talking you through how to upgrade your Windows 10 machine with Microsoft's snazzily named Windows 11. So I'm going to be talking through a few things on this video. I'm going to show you how to upgrade, uh, like I say, from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And I'm also going to cover a couple of common errors that you might see when you are upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. The first one of them being the TPM error message. And also I'm going to run you through the CFOS speed error message if you are running the Turbo LAN app on your machine. And both of these can prove to be a nuisance uh, when you're trying to install Windows 11. So without any further ado, let's get started with the installation. So like all these things, uh, what I would suggest you do first is open up your Windows 10 um, settings page and run the update page and make sure everything is up to date in Windows 10. Once that is done, you then might get a message, which you can see on the screen there, which says get PC health check just underneath the actual update box. So you can click on where it says get PC health check and this will take you to a link within your browser where you can download the PC health check tool that Microsoft provides. So if I click on the link here, for example, it will then open the page up. And then in here, I can then download the PC Health Check app. So I can run the app and make sure that everything is compatible with my computer for Windows 11. And incidentally, if I do not want to run the Windows update, I can go directly to Microsoft.com Windows slash Windows 11. I'm on the GB site, as you can see in the top search bar there. But all you do is go to this web address, scroll right to the bottom, click on where it says learn more. This will then open another page where you can then click on check for compatibility. And then this takes you back to the uh, check for compatibility page that we was on earlier, where we can download the PC Health Check app. So I've pre-downloaded it, so it should be in my downloads folder, uh, which it is just there. And once you've got it downloaded, you just double click on the uh, Windows PC Health Check setup and it will run that program on your computer. Let's close all the other windows down so we can see what we're doing. And once you've got it up and running, you can then click on check now and then see all the results and see what your computer is complaining about. If it is complaining about anything at all, if it's not, then great, you can sort of skip uh, this middle section of this video because at this part now of this video I'm going to um, show you how to clear the TPM message that you will uh, might see if you don't have it enabled on your machine. Obviously I'm running um, an AMD, you see me going through this spec there with all the green ticks but you see right at the top TPM2 must be supported enabled on this PC. Um, so you can click on the more about enabling your machine might be an older machine and it might not have the functionality to have TPM enabled I know this machine is an AMD, a new AMD um, Ryzen 7 machine or newish. Uh, I think it's about 18 months old. So I know it is compatible. So we need to enable TPM in the BIOS. So at this point, I'm going to restart this machine and I'm going to have a look at how we enable TPM so then we can get a clear message when we run that check tool in a second. So this desktop is running uh, an Asus X570 motherboard and it's the Asus BIOS that we need to access. So for this particular machine, I push delete or F2 to enter the BIOS settings. Yours might be something slightly different and might look a little bit different in the menu once you get there, uh, but it is the same type of procedure to enter or change the TPM setting. So this is the um, sort of easy mode and you can see at the bottom there to enter advanced mode, I push F7 or click with my mouse where it says advanced mode in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, again, this is a, for the Asus motherboard, don't forget, so yours might look a little bit different. And I need to go across to where it says Advanced, click on that with my mouse. And right at the top, we've got AMD FTPM Configuration. So here we need to change it from Discrete TPM to Firmware TPM. And as I click on them and hover, you can see at the bottom, it actually tells you what each of these ones do. So just be careful uh, if you've got stuff saved. Uh, obviously when you're changing from discrete to firmware, it is fine, it should be uh, remember everything. But if you're going the other way around, which I don't know why you would, but if you're going the other way around, um, then you might lose some of your settings. And when you go to apply it, it obviously gives you another notice warning sign. Uh, and goes through the uh, BitLocker encryption and stuff like that, which is what this is all about and how Windows 11 changes from Windows 10 and sort of forces you down this route. So once you are happy with what you see on the screen and have read what you need to do, you just click on OK. 
And then all we need to do now is exit and save. Now yours might be push F10 or something like that to save on exit. On the Asus, you just go up to exit and then click save changes and reset. So what it does, it says this is what it's going to change. So it's going to change the TPM device selection. Click on OK and the machine will restart again and then should boot back up into Windows. And because we have just changed um, a TPM setting within the BIOS, it might just take it a little bit longer than you would normally expect it to do to boot into your Windows environment. But once it has, we can then obviously log in and check on a few things. Now, before I actually download Windows 11, I just wanted to show you uh, running the, uh, the setup tool and also what it looks like in the settings menu. So if I click on settings, go to my updates and security again, you'll see straight away in here, it's still got the uh, PC doesn't meet requirements. So again, I could download the tool, but we have already downloaded it. It's in my downloads folder. And I'm going to run the PC health check setup again for the Windows 11. So I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to show you that um, it is now all clear. So it is opened up behind. So I'll just close these windows down and then click on check now, see all results. And then now we have green ticks all the way down. And most importantly, we've got the TPM secure boot is all uh, green ticked right at the top. So I'm going to hide these results and close that down. And now we can go to the um, Microsoft website and download Windows 11. Now, if you're doing this a bit later, you might see the Windows 11 update in your update and security within settings. But obviously I'm doing this a bit ahead of time. So I need to go directly to Microsoft's website. So I'm just going to close down the PC health check tool, close that, open up um, my browser, type in download Windows 11 in Bing there. You might be using Google. It doesn't really matter. And then going down to the page that is the download Windows 11 on the Microsoft.com website. I already have it open. As you can see there, download Windows 11. And you see for yourself, I'll put this in the description box below, by the way, the link for this uh, download. And you see for yourself there, there is three different options. Uh, for this install, we're going to be using the first option, the installation assistant. So we've got the download now button, click download and then open file once it's download and then click yes to run the install Windows 11 tool, accept and install and then let it go and do its thing. Now there is two other options on this page. One of them is the installation media and the other is the ISO image. ISO image is really good if you are installing this on several machines, especially if they are clean installs. Uh, but again, at this point, I am now going to speed the video up uh, and any parts in the video from this point onward that are slow, that could take anything from 20 minutes to uh, two hours, depending on the speed of the machine, I will speed up so we're not sat looking at the screen for obvious reasons. So there are several parts to the install. The first one is the downloading of the Windows 11 it itself to your machine. It then verifies the file and makes sure all the files have downloaded correctly. It will then go away and try and install Windows 11. Once it's run this first install, it then goes away and gets updates for Windows 11, which you'll see on the screen in a second once it's got past the three quarter way mark. Uh, but it will then go away and get the updates uh, for anything that's installed on your machine that uh, is available for it to do. And then once it's done this, it might fail. And you can see on the screen, I will show you the uh, CFOS speed error that I get. And it fails on this particular first go. So I get the um, CFOS speed driver error for Windows 11. And it's saying there the PC as a service that isn't ready for this version of Windows 10. A new version is available. And what this CFOS speed driver is, it is part of Turbo LAN, which installs with some of these motherboard manufacturers. So it is this gray box that you can see here. You can also access it from the taskbar, which I'll show you in a second. But if I open a web page up, for example, you'll see a small bump in the traffic, uh, which showing you what's going in and out of my LAN connection. But if I just close the browser down, and I'll just show you what it actually does. So as I hover on the turbo LAN here and if I click on the three lines, the burger menu there, it will open a browser up and it showed me which programs are consuming or using my LAN connection. So that's all it does. So I'm going to close that, go down into my taskbar, go into my icon, the turbo LAN icon, which is there, right click on the mouse, go to options and then go to program update and then scroll down to check for new version now so i'm going to show you how to do it this way it pops a box up after it's checked if a, if a new version is available click on that it will open a web page for you to download the new version which is saying the new version available 
um, for my particular program. So I can then click on download CFOSPY, the orange box there, and it will download the file into my folder. And I know then I've got that downloaded into my downloads folder. So I could have run that, that file then, but every time I went to run it, it said it was uh, doing a paid for version, which obviously Asus provides a, a free version. So what I did then was opened Armory Crate up, which is a, all it is is a tool uh, to update and um, sort of control things on your Asus motherboard. Um, so it is supplied by Asus to update their software and hardware. And in the utility tab within tools, um, you can see it says Turbo LAM is their current version is 1.10.12. It's not listing anything installed, even though it is installed, as we know, because we can see it here. Um, and if you remember earlier, when I went to the options to download the uh, most up-to-date version, it was 12.02512, where Asus is only listing it as 10.10.12. Granted, my uh, version that I have installed is slightly older than that, but I did actually run the uh, download and install tool from here, uh, and I did try and update it this way, but I got the same error message again when I ran Windows 11, which you'll see in a second once I have done this. Again, I'm going to speed this section up um, in a second, so you can uh, we're not going to sit and watch it go through all the Windows 11 process again. Uh, but basically, I ran the download and install to update Turbo LAN, and it didn't work. It changed the icon. It did update it to the version that Armory Crate was saying, uh, but it didn't still let me install Windows 11. So what I had to do after I ran this program was then download a beta version or make sure that was ticked, which I'll show you in a second. So there you go. After running the Windows 11 again, I get exactly the same CFOS speed driver error. So even when you click refresh, it doesn't do anything. So you have to close it. So if I click refresh, it doesn't, it sort of locks up in this sort of state. So you have to close the actual Windows 11 setup window at this point to go again. So hopefully you won't get this far and you will go directly to the update. So again, go to the turbo line. You see the icons change because it's been updated. It's now on 1.10.2. But if you go to options, program updates, I then made sure that I had also check for new beta versions ticked and then check for new version now. I then get this pop-up box, which I can then click on. It then opens another web page up. So in theory, what this is doing is opening it directly from the, hopefully the Asus one, and then downloaded this CFOS speed version 12.01 build, downloaded that one, and then ran that from my downloads folder, which you can see here, I'd already downloaded it once. I've just run it twice for the sake of this video. So bearing in mind, this is obviously a beta version, but all the same, it gets uh, Windows 11 installed. So again, just go for the usual same procedure. Uh, next, next, and agree to all the usual stuff and then run the installation wizard for CFOS speed to get your Windows 11 installed. Once it's finished uh, running the install, it will then install the uh, trial version of CFOS speed, um, which you can change once the Asus update runs again. So finish that install. We've got the beta, beta version of CFOS speed installed. And I've purposely left the Windows 11 set up there um, for us to see, but just before we do that any further, just show you the turbo line that you see there. It says 30 days uh, trial before purchasing, which puts the 30 day trial on. Anyway, yeah, getting back to this Windows 11 setup, if you try and click refresh, it doesn't seem to do anything. It just seems to get locked up on this Windows 11 setup page. So click the red cross uh, to sort of back out of it. It then goes through this process of trying to clean the files, well, it did on this machine. Uh, and then once it tried to clean the files, it then come up with an error message after trying to run this step three of three, which you'll see in a second. Uh, I think it says something went wrong. There we go, something went wrong. So click try again. Uh, again, I clicked on accept and install. So we're back to sort of where we should be before we got the um, CFOS speed error. The, or the only thing that's changed now is it won't have to download it um, because it just verifies the download because it's already been downloaded to your machine. So, yeah, going through this process, this is real time. Uh, at this, I haven't speeded it up at this point, uh, but I will do, uh, obviously, when this install. But again, this will be quicker uh, when the install starts. And if you sort of followed on from here, you should then get the message that the install is ready to go and it is wanting to continue from where it left off. So you'll see, I've just speeded this uh, section up just slightly, uh, but it shouldn't be take too long to do this step three of three if you're sort of at the same point as I was. Um, and it will bring up the message that says, ready to install Windows 11 and continue where I left off. So it's obviously got so far, got stuck with the CFOS speed, uh, and then we want to continue from where I left off. You could start again from the beginning if you wanted to make sure you got a, a full clean install, but I just uh, left it continue from where I left off and then click next on this particular uh, machine, the particular upgrade that we were doing. So down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the next button. 
And then finally, this allowed me then to install Windows 11. So again, this is going to be greatly speeded up, um, but I think it maybe took 20 minutes uh, to complete this, maybe a touch longer. Uh, but it finally gets to the install Windows 11, the proper sort of screen. If you ever install Windows 10, you would have seen something similar to this. Uh, where it actually goes sort of out of the operating system uh, and starts to write the Windows 11 files properly. Um, so yeah, once it's done this, it will then do a reboot and we can finally get into the Windows 11 environment. And at this point, you'll get the splash screen asking you're about to be signed out and restarted. Uh, it will then go to the black screen, do some more updates. Um, it then looks like it's going to boot in and then does some more updates on top of that. So getting things ready. This is the same as if you're setting up a brand new machine. Uh, and then finally boots into the Windows 11 environment. And what I did here, I made sure, well, Armory Crate opened up automatically and updated, but then I made sure I ran the utility and the same update that we did earlier for the Turbo LAN. And the reason why I did that is because it clears the free version off your machine and puts the Asus paid for version of the Turbo LAN and the CFOS speed uh, error that we cleared earlier, puts the paid version of that on your machine. So it's well worth running the Armory Crate if indeed you are interested in using the uh, free version that Aces provide with their motherboards. And then it's just a case of uh, signing in with your usual credentials uh, that you've set up on your Windows 10 machine before you upgraded. And then it takes it a while on this first boot uh, as it applies the settings in your new environment. And then it'll boot to the Windows uh, 11 interface. So that is it. That's how to install Windows 11 and also how to clear the TPM error and the CFOS speed error when installing Windows uh, 11 uh, or upgrading from your Windows 10 to Windows 11. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please do subscribe to my channel. That's the only way uh, the my channel survives and smaller channels like this do survive on YouTube. Please give us a thumbs up if I have helped and you like the video and also hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube.